All right, so our second Feldspar video, or Feldspar video number two, um, we're going to talk about the um, solid solution of albite to labradorite to anorthite, so our um, sodium end member to our calcium end member. And let's go back to our little diagram here. Um, so when we covered orthoclase and microcline, we were up here. Um, what I didn't say in that video is that we're gonna skip sanidine. Even though it's on your mineral list, it is a very important mineral to understand for petrology, but likely it usually forms in igneous rocks and it's very fine grained. So in rhyolites or something like that, it's very common to see sanidine. However, the crystals are so small um, that it's just not something that we can have a nice hand sample of to show as an example for a mineral quiz or a mineral exam. So it is really important and you'll see a lot of this when you take petrology um, in the next couple of semesters. And so what we'll talk about now is this um, sodium end member all the way to the calcium end member and we'll focus on albite, labradorite, and anorthite. Now all of these, like I said in the last video, if you were on a quiz or an exam and you just said plagioclase feldspars, you would get the points correct. And you would maybe get a couple bonus points or something like that if you were actually going to go out on a limb and say, mm, I think this one's actually albite, or I think this one's labradorite, something like that. But just saying plagioclase or alkali is totally fine. All right, so let's get started. We're going to be talking about albite, labradorite, and anorthite. Okay, so I've got them lined up just like that. We've got our albite here, labradorite here, and our anorthite here. And now really similarly to what we had in the orthoclase and the microcline, these samples are not necessarily like the purest samples. Because this is a solid solution series, we're constantly moving from one end to another and having compositions in between. But I've tried to pick out a couple here that are really exemplary of the group. So the first thing that comes to mind when I think of albite here, um, and you know what, before we even get into that, all of these here have a vitreous luster. They they all have a really similar hardness of about six, so they should all scratch glass pretty easily. Um, vitreous luster, hardness, they all have those nice 90 degree cleavage planes. Um, and they all have moderate to moderately low density. So we'll just get all of those things out of the way. They don't react with HCl. The thing that helps us to understand which of these samples we're looking at is going to be color, exolution pattern, um, and any other trick, uh, trick things that we might talk about with labradorite specifically. So let's look at albite here. The first thing I think of with albite is this pure white color. Now, if I hold this up, especially compared to this sample here, this is very, very pearly white, which is common. And we can see that we still have those nice cleavage planes. So if you were, if you had like a clay mineral or calcite or something that was blocky and white like this, actually looking at the cleavage where we still have 90 degree cleavage angles, but we only have two of them, is gonna help you identify this. As well as the fact that this one specifically is not very transparent, right? It's not an opaque mineral, but to the eye, we don't have a nice crystal-like quartz where we can clearly see through it. I'm trying to hold it up here so you guys can see some of these cleavage lines. But yes, the color of this one is one of those dead giveaways to me. Also, unlike an orthoclase, um, these ones here that we have would not have any nice euhedral crystals. I think that euhedral crystals of albite might be quite rare, but don't quote me on that one. Maybe we just don't have good samples. <laughs> Let's look at this one here too. And for this group, remember how orthoclase, ooh, that's a good, that's a good face. We can still see that kind of step pattern pretty well if we get a good face like this. And then we can see that it's 90 degrees, right? Here's this face, this face. 90 degrees. This one's a good one. Um, and so remember how orthoclase was our one monoclinic. These are all going to be triclinic. 
Yay. So just remember that orthoclase is the one that doesn't fit with the group. So yeah, for me, for albite, I noticed that it's, it's white. And all of these would also give us a white streak too. You know what? Let's just demonstrate it for fun. Remember, they're quite hard though. So let's see if we powdered it. Eh, it's pretty hard to see. There we go. So we could see white powder. They would all powder white as well. Great. All right, and we'll give it a good scratch, grass scratch as well. And that's the mark we just made. And they would all do the exact same thing. So we've talked about anorthite, the way that I, or um, albite, I'm sorry. We talked about albite here, white color, still has the gray cleavage planes. Um, really, it's the white color that I look for for this one. And the lack of any X solution too which was really prominent, remember, in that microcline. So let's look at labradorite now, which I don't even think is on your list, but it's such a fun example to talk about. So labradorite also shows a play of colors here. Let's see if I can get a good... Mm -hmm. It's okay, so you can see how we have a little bit of orange here, and then we have trying to get a good, I know there's a blue piece, maybe a little bit of blue right there. Anything right here? Hmm. It's always tricky. Ooh, there's some good colors. Nice. So blues, greens, all the way to orange. This is also a diffraction off of the lamellae that are inside this sample from the X solution that's created. So it's different from the diffraction that we would see in something like opal, um, but the fact that this has this, we call it labradorescence, um, is indicative of it being labradorite. And we can see here we have one of our cleavage planes, kind of. This sample is really rough and beat up. Oh, there's a good cleavage plane because we can see a couple of those lamellae. If you just look for those tiny, tiny lines and you'll notice that these lines, instead of being X solution that we could see with color on the surface of the sample, this one more looks like a physical line, right? Yeah, like stripiness. And notice that these lines are very straight. They are like very straight. This tells me that we're in plagioclase um, compositions now, instead of something like orthoclase or microcline, those, um, alkali feldspars. So looking for these straight X solution lines, that's plagioclase. So now we talked about labradorite. It's just a fun example to have because of that labradorescence, which is really unique to these samples and is a good opportunity for bonus points. Then we have something like this, which is our anorthite. And anorthite to me usually has this kind of um, we can still see the really nice cleavage planes. All of that's pretty typical of our feldspar family. And it's not as pearly white, right, as something like albite. And I don't know if that's a function of the calcium, but it's just something that gets me thinking, okay, which feldspar might I be looking at? And I don't typically see very white um, examples of this. But like where albite did not have very much X solution that we could see with our eye on this hand sample, this one we can see a ton. I'm gonna try to hold it here so you can see all of these X solution lamellae. I mean, there's a ton, and this is a specific type of twinning as well. When we look at these in a microscope, it has like black and white lines. It's very indicative and very obvious that you're looking at a plagioclase feldspar. This one too on this cleavage plane also has that step-like pattern. But remember the way to tell it a, um, as a plagioclase instead of an alkali is that these kind of um, lines are on the surface here and they're very thin and very straight. This sample is a really nice sample of anorthite. And all right, I think we've covered everything. All of these, triclinic, they all have the same cleavage, two cleavage planes at 90 degrees to each other, all the same hardness at about a six, six and a half. They should all scratch glass. Um, 
and they would all have a white streak and they all have the same density pretty much. So really looking for the color differences, a play of color from something um, like diffraction or exolution lamellae and then the type of lamellae that we see are all going to help us understand which of these in the plagioclase family that we're looking at. So we'll just do like a little brief overview. So these we would all have expect if we see exolution for it to be very straight um, and to not be a color variation but almost a surface variation. For these we would expect if we have exolution for them to be wavy ripply lines of different colors of the sample. Orthoclase is the one that has really great um, new hedral crystals, albites very white, and I think we've kind of covered everything. So this will be one of two Feldspar videos that we have.